So my journey started when I was 19. For the first time, I walked into the gym. Uh, I had no idea about bodybuilding, bodybuilders, uh, becoming a pro or anything. I just liked working out. But two years after that, I decided to uh, do a contest. I did bodybuilding junior and I won that show. But three, four years later, around 2014, 2015, when social media started coming up and I started to uh, follow more people and get inspired by them, I realized this is all I'm doing and this is the only thing I like to do and this is all I think about from the minute I wake up. So I thought maybe I can make a career out of it. I made my decision to make this uh, something that I'm gonna invest my life into and I became selected for national team 2015 to go to Arnold Classic Spain to try my chances to become a pro. After six months of preparation and working at the same time to be able to afford the cost uh, to go there, uh, three hours before my flight, when I had all my bags packed, uh, depleted, and water manipulation started, I got a call and they told me, me and two others were not able to get the visa so I can go to Spain. So after that, I was dealing with depression for a while and I thought maybe this is it. I'm not gonna ever do it, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. And something inside me was just telling me I have to keep going and try it and maybe some way this is gonna happen. About a year later, I got an opportunity to come to the States and be able to get the visa to compete in Arnold Classic Ohio. Uh, we made it here after 20 hours of flight again in the same situation, depleted and controlling water. When I was about to sign up and get my number, when they heard my name, they said, we've got a letter from your federation and for political reasons, uh, you're banned from the show. Uh, I was just lucky. I was able to negotiate with them and show them that I haven't done anything wrong. So they let me compete at the show, but because of the amount of stress and the situation and the circumstances that I went through, I wasn't able to bring my best on a stage and I ended up placing sixth. The next day, again, that feeling came back. I was depressed, I was lost. I didn't know uh, what, what should I do with this. And I started just walking through the expo. I got really inspired and I started thinking, I knew if I go back, my dream will die with me and I would never ever be able to achieve what I really like and I wanna do with my life. I made up my mind, went back to my room, picked up my phone and called my dad and I said, hey, I think I've made a decision. Uh, he said, what's up? I said, I think I'm not coming back. Uh, my family never really knew where I'm going with this or uh, what's going on in my mind, but they, just were, they were just seeing the amount of work that I was putting into this and how much I liked it. So they were the only people that they've been next to me from the beginning till now, always supported me. The rest of my friends, when I used to tell them that I want to go to America and pursue this dream, they used to always make fun of me, uh, telling me, how do you even want to talk? You can't even speak English. What makes you think you can become a pro? How do you even want to make it there? Uh, how do you want to get the visa? But I, there was always something in me that I believed that this is going to happen. So I never stopped working and it finally happened. I flew to California. Uh, I stayed with one of my friends on his couch uh, for a couple months, but it didn't take long for me to realize the struggles and challenges that come with relocating. I had no ID, uh, no driver license, no credit card. Um, I had no resources. So one day I was like, okay, I gotta do something about this. So I started research and Google. Uh, found the address to a gym that they might be able to help me and one day I asked my friend I was like I'll pay for your gas uh, just take me to this address uh, we went there it was a small gym in San Dimas no one was in the gym I walked in knocked on the door and that's when I met Ryan Benson Team Zero Gravity uh, he was really confused at first when he met me he was like who are you what are you doing here uh, how did you find me and I was like uh, I'm from Iran, I want to become a pro, and I want to win Mr. Olympia. He said, all right, come in. We talked for 30 minutes, uh, he kind of checked my physique out, and he took me in with no expectations, and since that day he became my family. So it took me a couple months, so I got my driver's license, and I made it back to the gym, and I never forget this day. I walked into the gym, 
I saw something that I was not expecting at all. I saw all the people that I looked up to, Jeremy Potvin, Joe Manji, uh, Jake Alvarez. Basically, I was living in my dream. People that I thought I would never even meet in person, now I get the chance to train with them. So up to this point now on, everything was on me. After this, we started, I did seven, eight shows. I won some, I lost some. I came close so many times to my pro card second place, third place, uh, but I never gave up. And that's how I built up this never give up mentality. A lot of people like to talk about never give up mentality, but they don't really know what it means. To me, never give up mentality means when you have sacrificed everything, your family, your friends, uh, everything that you've known to this point for a goal or a dream and you give it everything you got and you don't get it but you keep showing up over and over again. Finally I was able to get my pro card at 2019 North Americans and I became a Classic Physique IFB Pro and now I'm at the beginning of a new journey. Uh, I want to become an Olympian and hopefully one day win Olympia. My name is Zanyar Qadirpur. I'm just a kid from Iran who never gave up on his dream.